There are two parts of the human consciousness, ego and soul. Ego refers to the self, that human part of you responsible for survival, procreation and of course fear, which can come in really handy in a tight spot. Think of it as your primal urges and instincts. The soul on the other hand brings a belief in an afterlife. It creates beautiful art, music and literature. In each person is a constant balancing act between ego and soul. I often view the ego as a school bully always wanting things done their way. So in a very young and inexperienced soul the ego will always call the shots and have the last say. But in very old and experienced souls they've learned a few tricks and they managed to put the ego in its place. So in simplistic terms younger souls are dominated by the human ego and in older souls the soul dominates the ego. So with this in mind we will examine the younger souls of all, infant souls. Because there is a marked difference in traits within the seven levels of any soul age I'll describe a typical soul trait from ages 1 to 4 then 4 to 7. And yes, I repeat level 4 because it usually overlaps. So let's look at infant soul ages 1 to 4. The early infant soul is raw, without experience and usually enveloped in a struggle over physical survival on the very unfamiliar earth plane. Thus the early infant soul stages from 1 to 4 are usually characterized by many fears. Learning how to survive is the primary concern. So early infant souls are concerned with the basics of survival, finding food, shelter and just staying alive. To our eyes, early infant souls have very difficult lives. Their lives are often short and very regularly experience famine, plagues, drought, flooding, hurricanes, earthquakes, wild animals, poisonous snakes and combat along with every other survival threat imaginable. The reason for this is they need to learn as many lessons as they can as quickly as they can. However, the human mind and body can only take so much. So these lives are often short-lived but the emotional lessons they can cram in are amazing. Being so fresh from spirit Infant souls can often have a mystical flavour. They resonate closely with nature and rarely feel on an individual level, but rather they feel a great oneness with everyone in their family or tribe. They can be intuitive and earthy in a simple, unquestioning way. They live in the moment, which can be very difficult for older souls to do. But just a side note at this point, you do not need to be an old soul, or even spiritual for that matter, to be psychic. There is this myth that people who are psychic are highly spiritual individuals. But nothing could be further from the truth. Infant souls can display profound psychic abilities. This is because they are not long out of the spirit world, and have not been conditioned by society to say it's all mumbo jumbo. So you see, it has nothing to do with being spiritual or an old soul. But that said, living a spiritual life will automatically awaken your dormant psychic skills. So start practicing now. Anyway, getting back to infant souls, their intellectual center does not become fully opened in this phase. So there isn't very much feeling oh, for ethics and personal morality. The early infant soul has to be taught what is right and what is wrong. Even a highly intellectual person may seem dull or not quite pulled together with his or her thinking. And in a psychological sense, infant souls are new to the world and consequently they do not know very much about what is going on and nor do they really care about worldly events. They are weak on savvy and common sense. This is often mistaken for lack of intelligence, but the two deficiencies should not be confused. It should not be thought that infant souls are intellectually dull. Intelligence is a factor completely separate from soul age. There are bright and stupid people in all ages. 
Each infant soul absorbs the culture and knowledge of our society very well. The hardware of their brains is functioning fine. The thing that distinguishes them psychologically is that their perceptions are shallow and simplistic. For example, cooking and eating are strictly exercises in survival, not even close to being opportunities for optimising pleasure. Infant souls from levels 1 to 4 tend to cluster around the equator because the constant climate makes some aspects of survival simpler. So out back in northern Australia, rural Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Sri Lanka, Borneo, New Guinea and the Amazon Basin and also much of Ethiopia and the Sudan, they're areas with predominantly infant souls. Iraq and Iran have had a lot of infant souls in the past, but over the last hundred years they're beginning to decline in numbers. Modern Western society is ordinarily too perplexing and complex in its demands to be a place for early infant souls. On the odd occasion that they do show up in a modern Western country, they generally gravitate toward less populated or backwards areas. Infant souls will not tend to seek regular employment because it's too complicated and involving to handle. So living on the fringes of society, they are often viewed by the rest of the population as inept or slightly out of tune. Later infant souls, ages 4 to 7. At this level, infant souls start to incarnate into more westernised or modern countries, particularly Europe, North America, Australia and Japan, to name but a few. Here they can begin to learn higher lessons usually taught by older souls and themselves. So like children, later infant souls are weak in understanding and they are often in need of guidance. Children may knock things over as they try to navigate the environment. They do not know the value of things they encounter and may break them. They often hurt themselves with their clumsiness and ignorance. So it is with infant souls in their attempts to cope in a complex world. But children grow up and usually learn to handle the situations of life, whereas infant souls do not. They are immature all their lives. Infant souls rarely come into the spotlight except through notoriety brought about by heavy karma creating lifetimes. And typical infant souls don't yet feel regret and even when they're in a court of law their lack of consciousness will really stand out. Again, like children, infant souls are not well socialised. In the worst instance they can be uncouth and lacking in social grace. They are deficient in taste and class. They often lack sophistication in dress and manner, just as small children who are simply not yet aware of these things. However, at their very best, they are innocent and simple, even as children are. Later infant souls only make up about 1% of the population, but that said, I've actually worked with one typical later infant soul. And I would sum them up to be like a spoiled child. When they don't get their way, they throw a tantrum. Or if you pick them up on a mistake, they lash out aggressively. These behaviours are typical fear-based behaviours. Infant souls don't fit in very well with mainstream of society, which is predominantly made up by young and mature souls at this stage. Everyone, even though they don't understand the psychological maturity, express the desire that these people would grow up, quit being silly, stop being foolish and stop being so childish. An infant soul is a babe in the woods when it comes to dealing with our complex society. The older souls, the young and mature, who dominate the events of the world are involved with issues and perceptions which are quite beyond the capacity of the infant soul to negotiate. So I suppose if you don't really understand what's going on, why pursue it? So they rarely get involved in or even show an interest in any sort of in-depth interest in wider and more complex aspects of life like politics, religion, 
humanitarian causes, the arts, sciences. Uh, I mean, they'll dabble in the limited elementary and simple things of life, like home and family, or a routine job, or odd jobs working for someone else. Often they do not even pursue a lifetime career, preferring to go from one menial job to another, and they tend to live in the moment and rarely plan for the future. Infant souls do not have very much inherent knowledge. By this I mean they do not have an extensive experiential background store of subconscious memories. Infant souls simply believe what they are told. They absorb a lot of information just as children do in their early years. And they accumulate an enormous amount of basic information and they readily adopt the teachings of their parents and society but without modification because they do not have the breadth of perception to know otherwise. Their concepts are not well founded. Sometimes infant souls latch onto some pretty kooky sort of notions because of their simplistic worldview and lack of experience. And they're gullible because they do not have enough depth of personality to recognize a silly idea or suggestion. So they're easily fooled and some of the souls older than them who are not very morally advanced themselves may enjoy playing tricks on them and making fun of them for their simple ways. My description so far should not be construed as condemnation or judgment of infant souls. It's just that they are primitive even as children are. At their best infant souls have a childlike innocence and naivety about them that can be charming but with most people they don't really find you know, that childish charmingness <laughs> in adults as they do in children. The best thing about them is that they are usually genuine. So like children they do not have enough savvy about things in general to pretend to be anything other than exactly who or what they are. Their range of experience is too narrow for them to respond outside of their own natures. So they do not believe in things they have not personally experienced. Infant souls are not yet part of social institutions. They are not yet acculturated. So, like babies, infant souls are more deeply in grasp of the species, so they show more animal behaviours. So for example, young children have to be socialised over a period of many years, which often means being taught to pretend to be this way or that way in order to get along with others, even when they don't really mean it. Infant souls, especially in the early ages, are at a stage where they have not been fully socialised in order to be civilised. Therefore, they do not know how to be phony. This also means that they can be very tactless. In these later levels, they can be taught the ways of civilization, but it is not truly part of their nature. Older souls, young and later, are inherently civilized because of all the lives they have had in the past. The infant soul motto would be appropriately, let's not do it. They do not know how to confront the world effectively. Infant souls find the whole business of living to be very fearful since so many things happen which are beyond their comprehension. They also possess a lot of foolishness as in fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Infant souls typically have a very narrow range of responsibilities in life. If they are confronted by something they do not understand they usually exhibit two types of reaction. One is they will withdraw, run away and hide in fear and bewilderment. The other is that they might launch a blind, savage attack on the confronter or their confronting situation. Both of these are appropriately primitive response patterns, not unlike that of animals. Infant souls are dealing with survival issues and most of the infant souls on the planet are members of primitive tribes where these issues are dealt with on a daily basis. Infant souls perceive themselves as me and others as not me. So they treat other people as objects. 
not as people like themselves. Therefore, they may not even see anything wrong with lying or stealing, cheating and murdering, if it seems superficially to further their personal advantage. They are clannish about their families since dealing with strangers is often too much of a challenge for them to cope with. Infant souls experience sexuality as a simple animal lust driven by instinct, without the complications of higher meanings present in older souls. They lack finesse, variety and subtlety in lovemaking as with everything else. In religion, as in everything else, infant souls typically believe whatever their parents teach them, not having the capacity to believe otherwise. So whatever the religion is, if any, if that was the tradition in the family, it's carried on. They rarely depart from parental instruction even when they are growing. Infant souls are easily programmed by authority figures or life experiences. Uh, also they are easily manipulated by unscrupulous individuals. Infant souls have a very simplistic interpretation of life. If they are intelligent and knowledgeable in an educational sense, they think they have things pretty well figured out and marvel at how other people, i.e. older souls, make things so complex. Older souls, on the other hand, are deeply involved in more subtle and complex issues and they marvel that infant souls have such a shallow and superficial understanding of the issues. Now, because of the upcoming ascension, planet Earth is close to the time when the last infant soul will incarnate. But coming up next, we'll examine the baby soul age. Fire and brimstone, patriotism and obsessive compulsive disorder. Please join me.